Hi there! Today I am part of an expat tag where I talk about making friends in a new country. Stay tuned! Hi and welcome back! If you're new to my channel, my name is Kelly and I'm an American living in a small town in the middle of Denmark. And I'm actually going to be doing an expat tag today which was started by my friend Yovi over at Yovi's home. You can check out her YouTube channel. And she actually came up with a list of questions that she wanted other expats to answer to give an idea of how it is to adjust in different countries if you are foreign and you are trying to make friends. So I thought that sounded like a good idea. So I've got a list of questions right here from her that I'm gonna be answering throughout the video. Okay, so number one, how long have you lived in your country? Um, so I live in Denmark and I moved to Denmark in the spring of 2016. So that means I've been living here now for four years. Number two, why did you leave your home country? And actually I talk about this a little bit in a video that I just made where I discuss adjusting to a new country and how to kind of make that adjust a little bit better. And I talk about how there's a lot of factors involved with your adjustment because maybe you're coming to a country by yourself or with a family or whatever. But my situation to answer this question, I came to Denmark because I have a Danish husband. And it's not to say that he couldn't live in the US. He lived in the US for nine years and we were happy in the US. But there were some things that were, I don't know, changing with both of our jobs and we thought that maybe we should try to look for new ones. And we lived in a place in the US where I was very close to my parents and my sister. My brother wasn't too far away. And so we would get together for holidays and a lot of different, you know, reasons, you know, maybe there was something going on with my nephews or my niece or something, or we would just get together on the weekends. I was a teacher in the U.S. So I spent a lot of time at my parents' house during the summer when I didn't have to work, but my husband did. So, um, yeah, it's not to say that he couldn't live in the US. He did for a very long time. But when we had this opportunity to, I don't know, kind of look around, we thought, well, if we go to a different place in the US, we would still have to travel to come back and visit my family. And so why not try to see if there's anything in Denmark? Um, well, there was always that idea that we would move to Denmark at some point in time. We have two children and they, don't know much about Denmark and they couldn't speak Danish. So we thought really the only way that they could get this experience of Denmark would be to actually live there. And so we knew it was on the cards at some point in time, but we thought it would be a little bit further down the line than when it actually was. And so he found a job and we moved. And so I guess you could say that we moved because my husband got a job here. That's pretty much the short answer. Okay, number three is did you already have a support system established in your, your new country when you moved there? And I would have to say yes and no. Um, the thing is, is that my husband is Danish. He does have family and friends who live here, but none of them live near where we live. So it's not that you know, we're, we moved to the same town as my mother-in-law or anything like that, where if we were going through trying to unbox things or we were trying to remodel something or whatever in the place where we just moved, then I would be able to send the kids over there and get a little bit of help with them. Um, or if I wanted to go to the grocery store and I have no idea what the word for yeast is or where to find it, that was something that was very difficult for me when I first moved here. There are a lot of things that I just didn't know what they were called or where to find them. Um, and I think having a support system really would have helped with that. But we live um, kind of in the middle of nowhere. And I say that because 
I don't have any friends or family here. My husband doesn't have any friends or family here. We have to drive hours before we get to friends and family. And so it's not so easy for them just to kind of come up and, you know, take me grocery shopping, for example. So, um, yeah, and my husband's a pretty shy person. He's He doesn't like to be the center of attention. You'll never see him. Um, voluntarily on any one of my my videos because he's just not interested he doesn't want to do that and so he's not the type of person that will go out of his way to ask other people for help um it's not and it's not really that he needs the help it could be more you know he goes to a grocery store everything's in danish he's from denmark he knows what it says but I don't think he quite gets the idea that I have no idea what anything says. And because I didn't speak Danish at all when we moved here. And another thing with that is that when he moved to the US, he told me about the times when he would just go down the spice aisle. And you can imagine, in some of these American grocery stores, the aisle for spice is bigger than a lot of the, the food sections that you would even find here. It's just crazy. We have a lot of selection. And good or bad, whatever, I mean, I don't know. You can say bad things about it, but man, I, I miss just having variety. But I can't imagine if I would have had a huge grocery store shock like that if I would have moved to Denmark because that would have been very overwhelming. So I'm really glad for the really small, basic grocery stores that we have here in our small town and that you get to kind of know where everything is right away and there's one of everything. You know, there's, you know, one kind of this and one kind of that. So it's not like, oh, I've got to read through 20 different things to find out which of them I want. So I really would have loved to have had a support system. I know that some people move here um, because it's more of a, a survival and they tend to get people that are their mentors, um, like refugees, for example, let me just say it. Uh, I know that a lot of refugees who come here, they get people from the communas who help them out, you know, and they come and visit and whatever else. I think it would be great for expats to have that. Yes, I'm very educated. I can figure these things out, but it just would be nice to have somebody, you know? It would be nice to have that. Um, and I know in my husband's company, they also had, you know, somebody who worked with people coming from other countries to get them kind of um, situated in the town, you know, to give them ideas of what the town has to offer. And, and that was very helpful. But it was really just a person sending me a list and an email. It wasn't a communication. There was no like interaction, no back and forth. And I really would have loved that. I know that there are a lot of expat groups out there or like consultants and businesses that are trying to kind of make this experience a little bit better for people. So, because I know that a lot of expats that come to Denmark, they don't stay. And it's because of that, you know, first so many years that they have here. They come here because they have a skill and the education and they're they're using it in, in the workforce. But they end up going back to their countries because there's not that support there. And yeah, I know that it really would help me um, if, if there was somebody there just to kind of help me out for like the first couple of weeks, you know, just so I know my way around the grocery store. I mean, really, come on. Number four, how did you make friends in your new country? Well, to be quite honest, um, I pretty much tried everything. Um, I used to be a runner in the US. I'm not a runner in Denmark, but I used to be a runner in the US and I loved it. And I loved my running group. Those were the best people in the entire world. They were my closest buddies and everything. I was in an all women's mother's running group. And yeah, it might seem very kind of segregated and whatever else, but I chose that. I wanted to be with other mothers and it was really nice, you know, but um, when I came here, I thought I'm gonna I'm gonna create that same kind of feeling and family that I had in the U.S. And I joined a running group. We moved here on a Friday, and I started the running group on that next Monday. So it was only a few days in. We still had things in boxes and whatever else, 
but um, I was very determined to fit right into this new town. And of course, the language was a huge barrier. Nobody spoke to me in English. There's seriously, after four years, I can count the amount of people who've spoken to me in English on one hand. And then you meet other people who have no intention of learning Danish and they say, oh, I've never had a problem speaking to people in English. Everybody always speaks to me in English. And I'm thinking, God, you know, that really would have been a little helpful. I mean, I was so gung-ho with trying to use the Danish that I was teaching myself, you know, from a textbook and like a CD program that I got off Amazon. And I was able to have the very basic of all conversations where I'd be able to say something like, hi, my name is Kelly and I'm married to a Danish man. So, yeah, hi, yeah, hello, Kelly. Yeah, I give me a dance man. Yeah, I told Bern. Yeah, I bought here a beer. No, yeah, I live again. You know what I mean? It's like the most basic stuff. There's not a whole lot that I could add to any of that. So if anybody came back with like the same thing, hi, I'm so and so. This, you know, I'm married. I have these many kids. This is where I live. Our conversation wouldn't be going very far, but at least it would be something. And it was so many weeks. I went every single week, if not once, more than that because they met three times a week, and I don't know if I want twice a week or if I just want once. It all depended on the boys' schedule. But I mean, it was not because of a lack of trying, but I tried to go to different groups and try to find people who were into the same things as I was. But I only had one person talk to me. And after a couple of months, that person had an injury and she didn't come back. And I was just like, but I kept going and I kept going for a year and yeah, nobody wanted to talk to me. I mean, they got used to me being around, but I didn't make any friends. And it's kind of sad to think about it, but it's not because I didn't try, you know? And then I actually went on Facebook and tried to find groups of people who were just like me, expats from other countries who were living in Denmark. And I thought, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and meet some people. And I did. I met some people that way. And it really made a difference because, um, you know, they had already been living here for a few years and they could tell me about their experiences and, you know, like some things that went wrong for them. But, you know, I could learn from their experiences and I just thought that was, you know, so worthwhile. And it was just kind of funny because, um, I, most of the people that I met were British, you know, I wasn't really finding other Americans. And if I did, they were like an hour away. So I started a lot of friendships, you know, online. And I guess it's just kind of how you do things these days, you know? I mean, I'm not used to that. I feel I'm very like old fashioned where I would meet somebody and we would talk and then we would make plans and whatever. But the language really kind of put a hindrance on me making connections. What did I do to make friends? Um, pretty much whatever I could, you know, making conversations. I mean, I invited people over to my house for dinners. I invited them over for coffee. I, I tried a lot of different things. And the problem was I, I was really quiet during conversations because I didn't always know. I joined a group of women at church, a women's group. And, um, I felt horrible because they go around in a circle and everybody would tell about their problems, you know, and then everybody started crying and, you know, I'm like, what did she say? You know, like, I hope I don't say anything that offends her because I really have, I think it's something about her kid, but I don't know. Ugh. <laughs> I did so much more in Denmark to make friends than I ever would have done in the United States. I would have never done some of these things. But I did it because I had nobody here. I have my husband and my kids. I have nobody here. So I have to try and put myself out there. And I would say that it worked mostly with the foreigners. The Danes that I became friends with um, were not friends in the sense of, I don't know, probably what you think of when you think of a friend. It's more of an acquaintance. I don't know. It would be nice if I had Danish friends, and I think a lot of people think that when they come to Denmark, you know? But it's not always that easy. Okay, number five, do you have any tips or resources for newcomers? 
Uh, yeah, check out any one of my videos. I just made a video talking about adjusting to Denmark. I mean, definitely check that one out. I'll put a link. Um, that is a lot of my tips and tricks of, of, of things that kind of worked for me and experiences that I had that, yeah, I, I try to talk to a lot of expats about not getting your hopes up and not having huge expectations of, I have to learn Danish by this time and I have to have Danish friends and I need to have a job that I'm in love with and all these things and yeah. I don't know. I think when you put so much pressure on yourself, you aren't able to kind of enjoy things. Feel free to check out any of my other videos. Um, I also write on my blog. You know, I wrote on my blog about my first three months living here. I think I wrote about my first six months living here. You know, I kind of keep going a little bit at a time and, and things have changed. Things have changed. And I really think a big, a big part of that is because I have lowered my expectations. And not to say that Denmark sucks, but being away from family for me sucks. Being away from my extremely close friends sucks. Yes, we have Facebook, we can talk to each other on Messenger, and we do, but it's just not the same. And I think when you live during like this corona time and you're kind of stuck at home and you can't be around people, I think everybody knows what that feels like the, you know, the, the feeling of you just kind of want to be around somebody, you know, that, that you care about, that you want to talk with them face to face, you know, stuff like that. Don't have too high of expectations. Sure, have a list, have a, have a check off sheet of things that you want to accomplish, but don't go crazy. Don't go crazy. Number six, have you faced any challenges with making and keeping friends, um, for me here in Denmark? Well, yeah, I guess I would say from what I mentioned before, it's difficult um, to make friends in Denmark. I think that it's because people in Denmark, especially if you live in a small town, they're very kind of close knit. They're very, you know, they have their, their friendships, their groups established and they're not looking for new members. You know, there's no like, like help wanted sign, ne needing new members of our social circle. You're not really going to find that. Um, I don't know, I guess I wouldn't say that you'd find that in the US, but I'm from a small town in the US. I mean, I was born in one and I had lived there for quite a bit of my youth. And I know that in a small town, if you aren't from there, you stick out. People know, oh, there's that person. They know who you are. You know, it's, especially if you've got somebody from another country, maybe it's different in Europe because you tend to get people from like Eastern Europe kind of coming over. There's a lot of Eastern Europeans in this town, which I feel like it's kind of surprising, but I'm not as used to that growing up in a really small town in the, in the U S because Generally, people don't move to small towns in the U.S. from other countries. I mean, there usually aren't jobs and things there. It's sometimes surprising that people who grew up in the small town stayed. But, um, yeah, so, so I think we might be a little bit more aware of who these outsiders are. But I think we're also a little bit more accepting and say, oh, you know, you're the so-and-so from Denmark. Hey, you know, can I help you with that? I know for Danes, they don't really want to kind of like butt into other people's business and I get it. It's very different with like cultures and things. But, and I know that they have like a really great Red Cross system here that helps, like I said, refugees. And I even went to one of these like Red Cross meetings where it was filled with refugees and then me. And I feel so out of place, you know, because I'm like, I don't know. It's like, where do I belong? You know, where's my support? It's it's like you're either a Dane, you're an expat, or you're a refugee, you know? And it's just kind of like, well, you know, there's support here. You don't need support here. What about the people in the middle? That's me. So again, yeah, it's kind of a challenge, I'd say, making friends. Keeping friends? No, I think if you make a friend in Denmark, you've got that friend for life. So I think that's why it's difficult to make friends in the beginning here in Denmark because they're looking not for an acquaintance friend or a flyby friend or I'll be your friend for a year or something, but I think they're actually looking for people to 
be a part of their lives, you know? And I know that like my neighbors, some of them didn't talk to me for years after I moved into my house. And I don't know really the reason. It could be they don't like me, I don't know. But it could also be that they don't wanna get attached to somebody if they don't feel that they're gonna hang out, you know? Well, I've lived here now for quite a few years, so they're getting quite used to me. And so, I don't know, or maybe they like me now. Number seven, do you have more local friends, as in Danish friends, or expat friends? Um, without a doubt, more expat friends. I am I talk more with expats online, in um, social groups, like on Facebook, um, or maybe we have like groups set up on Instagram or something like that. I'm in a mem I'm a member of a group for uh, spouses who come to a foreign country because their husbands and wives got jobs here, and so we're kind of misplaced. Is that misplaced? <laughs> it's like, what do we do? So we kind of have our own little group. I have some friends that I've worked with, but I worked in an environment where we spoke English, and I met a couple of other Americans. And so I would say that the Brits and the Americans that I have met here have been my strongest um, friends. It just happens that way. I mean, I know people from a lot of different countries, um, and I know Danes, but I think for the most part, though, I'm not the type of person who is um, hanging out with people all the time. I am really busy with my kids. And my husband and I keep doing all these projects at home. And we like to go camping. So we do a lot of things together like as our small little family. So yeah, but when I go out, which is very rarely, but when I do, it's usually with, um, maybe it's a mom's group here in Denmark of international moms, or it's with some of my American friends. Um, I have done some things with a couple of Danish friends. I wouldn't say it's because they're Danish that I don't spend as much time with them. It could just be because we're busy and we have kids. You know, that's one thing. If I was single and no kids, no husband, maybe I would be a better person to ask this type of question because I wouldn't have any limitations. But because, you know, I can't just get up and go out whenever I want to because I have responsibilities, it might be just difficult for that instance. I don't know. So, and then number eight is who would I want to tag? I would like to reach across the border to Germany to the YouTube channel Passport2 and Donnie and Aubrey who have been living in Western Germany just to get an idea of what it's like to make friends for you guys. So tag, you're it. I would love to hear about your experiences in one of your videos. I've been wanting to talk about this topic for quite a while, but I guess I just haven't gotten around to it. I don't know if you've got any maybe tips for me, especially if you're Danish. Put them in the comments below. Thanks for coming along on the video. Don't forget to check out another one and I will see you again. Take care.